YouTube, what's good? Welcome back. Christopher Miniweather here with Deadstock Barbershop. And I got two things that I want to say. Two. Let's see. Can you get that two? Zoom in. Two things that I want to say. First of all, thank you guys for the support. I am like 49 subscribers away from 5K. If this is your first time here to my channel, I make videos to help you take your barber career the furthest in the shortest amount of time. So if that sounds like something that you're into, you just wanna learn how to cut hair, or you're beginning your journey, or if you're a barber that's already established but you like to continue your education, make sure that you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you will get notified every time I post a video. So with that being said, that's number one. Number two is, do you guys struggle cutting black hair? or overly curly hair, if you do, I have the fix for you today. So I see a lot of barbers, I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, I'm in multiple barber groups in Facebook, and one thing that I've noticed from the top to the bottom is there's a lot of people who do not do African American or really curly hair very well when it comes to blending. So in this video, I'm going to show you the step that I learned that made everything come together smoothly. Haircuts break down in three sections. You have your established length, you have the fade, and you have the area that I like to call the blending area. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys three haircuts. Two of them are very similar haircuts, but I want you guys to see what a difference having that third section in there, the blend, where the two, the fade, and the established length on top connect. I'm gonna show you guys right now, and then we're gonna hop into this video. I'm gonna break down three haircuts and show you guys the exact section that I was referring to. So there's two bad and there's one good that's done properly. And I just wanna show you guys, starting with the first bad one. <laughs> this haircut right here, as you can see, this is a very high fade. What most people would see, most really good barbers would see in this kind of haircut, we're looking at distance and perspective. If I step back from this haircut, it's going to look like a chili bowl. It's not gonna look like a good haircut. It's too compressed, so we got this bald, area right here and then you got the established length and then you got this very tiny area where you're looking to blend and it just does not work right it doesn't look like a a really good haircut that someone would ask you for but what i think of when i think of that is the guy probably came in with a picture like this a lot of people struggle with these kind of haircuts and and trying to get this kind of transition so our established length on top probably said nothing off the top you know we have the fade High fade, kind of drops in the back. I have no issue with that. I like the look on this haircut. If you look in the middle of the two, this blend is beautiful. So it gradually gets darker as it goes to the top. It's not abrupt. It does not just suddenly change and throw hair on top of this fade. It's what I like to call a hat. When I used to work in my old shop, I'd see some of the barbers every now and then do a haircut where the guy has long hair on top, he has a nice fade on the sides, but it just did not blend. And so I'd be like, oh man, you just gave that boy a hat. Was you mad at him? It appeared to me like they, it just had some hair sitting on top. That's what you don't want in a haircut. You want to create this blended area right here in the middle, that smooth transition, that beautiful haircut that the customer is desiring to have, right? Especially if he brought you in a picture and he leaves out looking like this, that's not what he wanted at all, right? The tip that I'm going to give you is going to work for multiple haircuts, hairstyles. It does not matter. It definitely helps with longer length on curly hair, as you can see. Looking at this haircut very quickly, first thing that comes to my mind is this is a nice fade, right? I see the desired length on top. This does not blend. This is not a smooth transition from this length to this length. We should not be able to see that it stops so abruptly, especially here in the back areas. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the perfect step to creating that blended area that connects the top and the side, that connects the established length to the fade. So stick around, stay tuned, and take your game to the next level. I promise you, you guys will not be disappointed by the end of this video. You're gonna love it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Once again, I'm 49 subscribers away from 5K. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys in a sec.
Okay, guys, so I'm excited to share this with you. This information is going to help you out so much, and I want to simplify these type of haircuts for you and kind of change the perspective on it, the way you think about setting it up. So I start off by preparing the hair. I'm going to comb out the areas that I'm going to cut. He's not cutting the top, so I'm not combing the top. So like I was telling you guys in the beginning of this video, I break my haircuts down into three sections. I have the established length on top, I have the blend and the fade. So we're going to start off by blending before we do anything else or debulking. I'm cutting it down with a number two and I'm going to create the drop fade shape. This is a drop fade haircut, so I'm not going to go all the way across as if I was going to do a mid or a higher fade. And so what it essentially is doing is it makes the job easier. It makes um, you understand it a little bit better because how much easier is it to fade into a number two with the grain than it is to try to fade into a whole bunch of bulk, right? So this kind of simplifies this haircut for a lot of people. I feel like it simplified it for me when I learned this step years ago. I'm establishing my initial guideline. This is not gonna be one of those super bald drop fades. It's just clippers closed all the way. So the system is as followed. Open, halfway, quarter, close. The clippers are all the way open right now. So what I do is uh, pretty often I'll start in the back and then I'll go ahead and go all the way around to the sides and connect the sides to the back just to make sure that the back is actually done right because sometimes it'll appear a lot darker in the back so I like to knock that spot out first. Make sure that it's good and it's accurate and smooth. So same thing you saw me do in the back, I was doing on the sides. Right here, I have my masters number one, open and close. So this is open at first. And then the next step is I'll close that guard and I'll go just below the, um, the one open and make sure that it is, uh, that I start to knock that line out with the one close. My masters are zero gap, so I can get a lot closer than you typically would with a fresh pair of masters straight out the box. And so I am raking. I hold the clippers at 45 to a 90 degree angle. They are not flat against his scalp. This allows me to skip that zero guard. Pro tip for anybody that's new out there, whenever you throw a guard on your clippers, don't just pay attention to where the guard is at. Actually look at the teeth in between the, the guard because that is actually what you're cutting. If that moving blade is not reaching the hair, I guarantee you're not cutting anything. It will result in a much longer cut than it should have taken. So right here, I'm doing the same thing. I'm using my corners now and I'm just cleaning up and detailing, looking for any dark spots, any lines, anything like that. I'm just gonna fade it out using my corners and raking. Once again, that's when the teeth of my clippers are not laying flat on the head. So right now I'm going to use the corners and raking as well, but with a number two guard against the grain. Essentially, this is where most of the, the work is going to be completed right here. You shouldn't have to do a whole lot more after this because again, we cut it down with a number two with the grain. So it should be a lot easier to fade into this length right now everyone knows that well everyone doesn't know but for us who are who have been cutting a long time we know that a two with the grain is longer than a two against and so i'm detailing open and close once again with my master's number one guard same thing looking for any dark spots and i'm just lightening it up making sure that the transition is smooth One thing that I always try to teach is to keep a brush in hand. You have to lay that hair back down to its original position of growth in order to see how it is and see what you're cutting. 
if you're cutting hair without a brush or a comb in your hand, you're gonna be working double time, I promise you, because there'll be things that look like it's a line that's really nothing but if you would've just brushed it out. And since I'm already on this side, I just go ahead and finish it up, even though I still have to go to the other side and do that. Why not knock this side out? You know, I like to work smarter, not harder. You don't have to bounce around so much, so I like to do as much as I can on one side and then move on and finish up the rest, not waste much time. And as you see, as I prepare to do my C cup, I just make a sliding motion, you know, a nice round sliding motion using the corner of my blade and just clean it up. And I'll do the same thing going up from here. Sometimes I'll just go straight in with the razor, but every now and then, you know, I like to use my trimmers on the beard. My trimmers are not zero gapped all the way, but they are close. So I don't mind putting them on people's face. And so what I'm doing right now is the one with the grain. I'm detailing the blend a little more, just refining it, making sure that it's nice and clean. Because I want that transition to be very, very smooth. And I believe it's a, a one open and I'll close it if I need to. Just making sure that you're always watching, always seeing, checking for more spots. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just taking it no guard, going straight up the side of the head. And the same thing you saw me do on the left side, I'm gonna do it over here on this right hand side. Number one open, then number one close. Masters no guard open, raking. And it's like I said on a previous video, you should have a system and you should know exactly what you did and where you did it at. It definitely helps you with time. It helps with, guarantee it's gonna help you with consistency and making both sides look the same. I, I see guys asking me all the time, you know, how do you keep your haircuts consistent? You know, what are some techniques? And I usually tell them, you know, it comes after a while, but you definitely have to remember what you did on the other side. So having a system definitely helps. And in the back, I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna connect both sides and I'm just cleaning it up. I don't want it to be too dark back there. But this is definitely a, a easier haircut than most people feel like it is. A lot of people struggle with this, this very haircut. But I think after this video, you guys won't be struggling much anymore. So now I'm using the corner with the number two close, fading into that number two with the grain, connecting the fade to the blend. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting the blend with the established link, cutting off any excess hair. I always got my eyes open on the fade because I want to make sure that I don't miss anything no matter what I'm doing. I might be edging you up <laughs> and I'm still looking at your fade. Right now I'm debulking the front, same way I went up straight up on the sides, I'm doing that in the front of his hair too. And what this does is it ensures that his edge up will lay down and it's gonna last him longer than if I would've just edged it straight up. And if you guys just saw me going across to the side of his head from the front, I'm really connecting the front edge up to the side as far as the bulk area, making sure that they're equally cut down, same length.
So my client hadn't had a haircut from me in a while. He's actually been cutting his own hair and I noticed that this side was lower than the other, it was lighter. So I asked him if he wanted to keep it there and let it grow back in, or if he wanted me to take it back down to where he had it last and he liked where I had it and he's gonna let it fill on in. So I always start my edge ups in the middle and work my way out. You can go left or you can go right, it's up to you. I don't know if you guys can really see it that well on camera, but he actually has dips on the front left and right sides of his forehead. I'll try to point it out right here. And that always makes the edge up look a little weird. Um, but you you kind of learn how to work around that, you know, as you gain uh, experience. If you just go straight across, it's gonna look like it dips in. So you kind of have to raise it a little bit. And on the sides, I just stay on that line and I brush it forward, clean up any hairs that come over it. So right here, I decided that his hair was just a little bit too long. Um, it just was curling over his edge up a little bit too much for my liking. So I just went ahead and cut it against the grain since I had already done a, a one with the grain. So I'm just gonna kind of speed through this part here just so we can get towards the end. Uh, I'll let the beat ride out. You guys continue to watch and I'll see you when I'm doing the finishing touches. So on this last portion, I do what I call the finish. This is where you go through and you're just looking for any loose hairs, anything wild. If we were doing a waiver's cut, this is where you'd be freehanding over the ways, making sure you're getting the loose hairs. You're gonna do this in every single haircut, just making sure that everything is in place before you hand them that mirror or before they walk, walk out that door. So in his case, after this, I'll kind of mess with the, I don't know if I got it recorded on here, but I'll mess with the curls, get them kinked up right, you know, make sure everything is looking good before he gets that glamour shot going. All right, guys, and here you go. This is the finished result. Let me know how easy this was to duplicate for you guys. I'm hoping that you can add this skill to your already long list of skills. And, and create a monster out of yourselves. You know, that's what I'm here for. It's for you to be the best you, or as I say in the beginning of my videos, to help you take your career the furthest in the shortest amount of time. I don't see why you have to bump your head trying to get all the information when you have someone that's willing to give it to you for free. So you guys enjoy this info, get out there and cut. I know y'all ready to work and I'm just appreciative. Hopefully we hit 5K after this one. Thank you guys and God bless.